Welcome back to another QuickBooks Online video. This is another part of my QuickBooks Online tutorial. If you've joined the series here, then please go back and watch from video one because these videos are created in a very specific order for a very specific purpose. And if you watch from the beginning, you'll get a lot more out of this series. In this video, I'm going to go through viewing the chart of accounts adding new accounts to the chart of accounts and editing accounts. Also viewing the activity on the accounts that form the chart of accounts. I'm saying accounts a lot of times. So the chart of accounts on QuickBooks Online, it can be accessed in a couple of ways. The first is in this left-hand sidebar, there should be an accounting module and under accounting, there is chart of accounts. If you don't have this list appear, if it just says accounting, then just click on accounting and then select chart of accounts. You can see that these two items here on this list basically just switch between these two headings, chart of accounts and reconcile. So this is the chart of accounts on QuickBooks Online. It can be accessed another way. If you go to the gear cog icon at the top right under the your company heading, there is a chart of accounts option. If I click there, you'll see it takes me back to the same screen, which is found under accounting. So this is the chart of accounts on QuickBooks Online. We have insurance, purchases, rent, telephone, dividends, depreciation, stock, cash on hand. So the chart of accounts is a list of all the accounts on QuickBooks Online, expense accounts, equity accounts, liability accounts, asset accounts. They are all showing as part of the chart of accounts and every transaction that's posted on QuickBooks Online has to be assigned to one of these accounts. If you have an expense, it's going to be assigned to an expense account. If you have an equity transaction, a liability transaction, it's going to be assigned, posted to an equity or liability account. So this is the chart of accounts. If you're familiar with other accounting software such as Sage, Sage 50 Cloud, Sage Business Cloud Accounting, you'll probably be familiar with having like a numerical designation for each account. So instead of having just a name for each account, there will be some sort of designated number. With Sage, it's normally a four digit number, 4,000, 5,000, 6,321 as an example. By default, QuickBooks Online does not have numbers assigned to each nominal account in the chart of accounts, but you can enable that if you want to. If you go to this gear cog icon again at the top right, under accounts and settings, which is under your company heading. We've been here before in previous videos. On the advanced tab, we've also been here in previous videos. You can see there's a chart of accounts box. If I click on this, we can enable account numbers. If you click on that and save, then you'll be able to have account numbers as well as account names. But most people don't use the account numbers on QuickBooks Online. They're happy with the default just having the names. Now, if you want to search for a particular nominal account, you can use this search box here. So if we are looking for the insurance expense accounts, we can just type in insurance and then that will filter the accounts within this list to just show the account that I'm looking for. And then from here, we can view the activity of the account and also edit the account, which we'll go through in a moment. If we're looking, say, for the stock account, if I just type in stock, the stock account will appear. So it's easier to filter the accounts by using this search box rather, rather than scrolling down and trying to find what you're looking for. Now you can also filter the information here by ordering in alphabetical order, type order, and also the balance. So we have a QuickBooks balance here. So this is the balance on the account. If you find that there's too much information showing on this page, let's say you don't want the detail type to show, then there is this gear cog icon here. If we click on that, we can get rid of some of these columns. If we don't want that detail type to show, I can untick that. 
and you can see it's a bit more clear, a bit more simplified now. You can even get rid of the bank balance if you want to, just to make things even more clearer. If you would like a hard copy of the chart of accounts, there is a print option here. To view individual transactions, to view a list of the individual transactions posted to each account, simply find the account you're looking for. So let's go to this one, cash on hand, and simply click account history. If we click account history, we can then view all the transactions that have been posted to this nominal account. And once again, there's an option to change what is showing in this list and also to print this list if we want to. And there's also an option to export this list to Excel. If we wanted to download this list, we can do that here. So that's how you view the chart of accounts. In the next video, we'll look at adding new nominal accounts to the chart of accounts and also editing any of the accounts on the chart of accounts.